Today I'm going to show you 7 things to attempt. If your Xbox Series X or Series S controller is having drift issues, which includes if your character is moving by itself, is having the jitters, is stopping, or is going in the wrong direction. I'm going to start with the safe and easy things and work my way up to the hard and more risky things. So just keep that in mind as you watch this video. Most drift is caused by debris that gets inside your controller mechanism, so most of these methods involve cleaning it. Here's method 1. Pull the stick up, you'll feel it kind of snap out of place. Then turn it over and tap underneath it. The idea is to shake debris loose. Then make sure you push down on the stick and snap it back into place. Method two is to blow around the stick. The best way to do this is to take a straw and flatten it a little bit. As you blow into the side of the shaft, push the stick in the opposite direction. You can also use canned air, or some people just put their mouth on it and blow. The idea is to blow debris out of the mechanism. If that didn't work, try taking a vacuum cleaner nozzle like this and vacuuming around the stick. Make sure you're pushing the stick in multiple directions as you do this. You may not want to go full suction. If you have an adjustment ring like this, you might want to turn it so that there's less suction. Before we get into more risky methods, there's one little simple thing you can try. That is to update the firmware on your controller. To do that, on your Xbox dashboard, go to settings, then go to devices and connections, then go to accessories, and then you should see a picture of your controller, and underneath should be three dots. Click those three dots, and then update now, if one is available. This has a very low probability of helping your situation, but it's the best thing to try before you get into the more risky methods. Caution, the upcoming methods involve taking apart your controller. I'm going to try to show you the most careful way to do things, but there is risk involved. You could end up damaging your controller or making the drift worse. These methods may also void your warranty, but if you're going to throw away the controller anyway, you might as well try these things. What we're going to do is do some cleaning from the inside. First of all, you need to get the grips off the handles. This may be the toughest part of the process because these grips are on there super tight. They're held together by seven tabs and two pegs. It just has to be pried off. A lot of people like to use a prying tool. In my experience, it actually damages the prying tool sometimes. And the controller itself can get some nicks in the plastic if you're not careful. What I like to do is take a piece of cardboard and stuff it beside the button right there. And then I take a long screwdriver and then I jam it in there and pry it off. If you're not careful, you may end up damaging the button like this. Some people are able to pry these off with their hands. So go with whatever method you feel comfortable doing. Now you're going to remove some screws. You'll need a Torx screwdriver. I've circled three sizes that fit. There's five screws to take off. One is underneath the sticker. Some people like to peel back the whole entire sticker. Other people like to puncture their way through. If you have a screw that doesn't want to turn, try soaking it in water, cleaning it, and tapping it. Remove the top. Then pull off the analog sticks. Even if only one of them is giving you an issue, you may want to do this cleaning on both of them. If the knob looks dirty, wash it under a sink. You now have good access to the stick mechanism. A lot of things can fall into this mechanism and cause issues. So what you're going to do is just clean it up. Pay close attention to these four little slits. I'm going to come back to them in a minute. The first thing you want to do is turn the controller over and tap on it. If you have debris in there, hopefully this will knock it out. Then blow into the stick with a straw, with canned air, or with your mouth directly. Make sure you also blow into the top of the green doors where those slits are at because debris gets trapped in those doors. And also make sure you blow this little gray tab over here. Next, get some alcohol. It could be isopropyl, rubbing alcohol, or if you don't have alcohol, you can use contact cleaner. If you have none of these things, water is acceptable. Just make sure you dry it out with a hairdryer afterward. Get a Q-tip and wet it down a lot and drop a few drops into the mechanism and stir it around. Also try getting some of it into the doors. If this doesn't help, give method 6 a try. Method 6 involves going even deeper than method 5, so there's obviously risk involved. You could damage your controller. Turn your controller face down and lift off the back. There's two little tiny wires, each with a tiny connector. Pull those out. Then remove these two screws. They're a different size than the other screws. It's a Torx head and six and seven both fit. Now you need to flip this lower board around. 
There's still wires attached, but if you do it just right, you can land it like this. The headphone jack may fall out. If so, just put it aside for now. So this method involves going inside the green doors on the stick that's giving you issues. It's a fragile door, so to help open it carefully, we need to know how it's attached to the mechanism. On the right side of the door, there's two pegs and one tab that holds it into the metal. And on the left side, there's one peg and one tab. You can see all five of those items from above right here. Take a tiny flathead screwdriver and gently push in on the two tabs. The idea is to loosen the hold that the tabs give, making the door easier to open. Then stick the tip of the screwdriver in the top like this and start prying it open. Sometimes the third peg doesn't want to come out, and it ends up bending as you open the door. And that's what's happening in this case. But I managed to get the door open, and inside the door is a little disc. Pop it out a little bit with the screwdriver, and then take some tweezers and grab the disc and just set it aside. Next, you need to clean inside that door. Get a Q-tip and some alcohol and clean the inside of it. There's a little nub at the top of the disc. Go ahead and gently clean that as well. It's raised up into the air with some thin metal. Make sure you didn't mush that metal down. If you think you did, go ahead and pry it up a little bit. It's now time to put everything back together. I'm going to straighten up the crooked peg before I close the door. You can also clip it off with nail clippers. It's not necessary to have every tab and every peg. There's a lot of redundancy. Insert the disc back in and then close the door. If the headphone jack fell out, put it back on the board like this. And as you put it together, make sure you re-fasten those two little connectors that are in the middle of the board there. Method 7 is very experimental and very risky, but if everything else has failed and you're going to throw the controller away anyway, you may want to try this as a last resort. I have not done this and I'm not actually going to show myself doing it. A small percentage of people have had some success by removing this gray little tab that goes around this white thing right here. One common way to do it is to take needle nose pliers and just snap it out of there. So hopefully this video helped you. If you'd like to learn how to test your controller, watch my video here where I talk about how to do it. May your games make you happy and smart and may people respect you for playing them. So long everybody.